On our last video, we did the door and we did the chimney. Today, we're going to put a window in right about here. Remember, we're making a lodge hall here, so we'll probably put in two windows here and a window back here. And we can't put a window on this side because that's where the chimney is. But probably put, probably put a couple of windows around that side as well, okay? But I'm just going to show you how to put one because all the windows will be the same and, and there's no sense in me putting you through having to go through all of that. What we'll do is I'll do one window today and then between now and the next video I'll put the other windows in and then we can put the siding on. But for today, we want a window roughly right here and we're going to make that window three feet wide. So here's what we're going to do. Let's bring us a line across. Put us in a... Let's make that at about 30, oh, let's make it 34 millimeters. Enter. Now, we want that to be three feet wide, which would be six millimeters. Type in six, hit enter. All right. Now, we have to decide where we want the windows. Maybe let's make them even with the... Uh, door facing so now if you ever want to take a measurement let me show you go down here let's, let's try to remember exactly how tall that was if we look over in our information box right over here we will see that that was 14 and a half all right so then Let's go up 14 and a half millimeters. Now, remember our trim was one and a half millimeters. Okay, the reason I, w I went ahead and put that in is because we want our window to be, let's make it a little taller than wide. So let's make it four feet, which would be eight millimeters. Okay, now we want a one and a half inch trim. I mean, 1.5 millimeter trim, I'm sorry. Which in the real world is much wider than it would really be, but if we don't exaggerate our details, you will not see it in the in scale world. And you probably, unless you have a great printer, it would be a challenge for that printer to print out, okay, 1.5. Okay, 1.5. Okay, and now we've got something to work with. Let's start with the inner part of the window. Take your rectangle tool, find your X on the corners. See how it sort of snaps in there? All right, when you hit that, now we can extrude this. What we want to do is uh, we want to put in our grill work. That's the first thing we want to do. All right, so let's uh, let's make our grill work 0.4 wide. That that's about as small as you can get, and it still won't print unless you have an extremely detailed printer. So, what I want to do is I want to put two bars this way and one across this way, okay? So what we want to do is we want to take our measuring tool and find halfway 
Remember, SketchUp tells us we're halfway is. See that circle? That tells me I'm halfway. All right. Now, this is work, working in millimeters instead of one thirty seconds of an inch comes in really nice. We, If you remember, this was six wide. Let's divide that by three, and that means we got to go in two. Type in two, two millimeters, and then do another one too, two millimeters. Now, if we measure this and got it right, that should be two, and it is. Okay. Now, let's pull in a little bit so we can see some detail here. Now, that is the middle of our grill. What we want to do is make it 4.4 .4 wide, so that means I have to put 0.2 on each side of that, right? All right, so let's, let's move that up. Type in 0.2. And let's pull one down, 0.2. Pull one over, 0.2. Pull one over, point two. Point two, enter. All right. Point two. Point two. Now, that, that middle one is only a reference, and it's going to be confusing. Let's go up here and get our eraser tool. Get rid of the middle one in each instant. Okay. Now, in order to push-pull our grill, we have to harden these lines. So, let's get our, let's, let's do the rectangle too. And this is why, watch this. Boom. All right. Now. Now let's go get rid of, we don't want to go up here and, and do delete guides because that'll get rid of these too. We don't want to do that. We just want to get rid of those two and those. Now something else we want to get rid of because right now we have a lot of little push-pull areas. We want to turn this whole grill into one push-pull area and we do that by getting rid of that, 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 and that. Okay. Now watch what happens when we move over with our push pull tool. We can push pull that whole thing, right? All right. Now before we push pull this, let's get rid of these right here. All right. You want that to go back by three millimeters because that's how thick the wall is. So type in three, hit enter. See how we can now see through that? That's the upper. That's the ceiling. Do that one. Make it make it start backwards. Type in three. Enter. Start it backwards. Type in three. Enter. Start it backwards. Type in three. Enter. See how we can now see through the window? For whatever reason, you have to do this first before you do the grill. All right. Now, see, we can see through in there. That's, that's the ceiling, and there's the your floor now let's let's push our grill in about oh let's let's go in point one i'm no i'm sorry one one millimeter all right now if you will notice we had some little lines that are left there let's let's tidy that up we don't want it thinking anything here see we're basically done now you're saying, well, that looks really crude. Well, you're dealing with, when you print this out, it's going to be so small. You're just, you know, I I did, uh, I went to the trouble in another, <laughs> this is a second version of this video. I actually created some facets along here and, and folded them back. And it looks great in SketchUp, but when you print it out, you, you can't even tell you did anything, and it takes a long time to do the facets, so we're not going to do that. 
Just going to leave it just like that. And believe me, when you print this out in your 3D printer, this is so small, it's still going to look good. It's going to look really good. Now, we, uh, and I'm going to, I'm, I could do this one of two ways. I could dr take my line tool and I can, I could go, well, I could go here and, and draw out all of this around here and you would not see the anomaly that I'm fixing to show you. But sometimes it's really advantageous to use this rectangle tool because you just go from one point to another point and boom, you're done. Well, it did not give me the anomaly. Not, a lot of times it'll give you a plane that covers the window and it didn't do it that time. So, hallelujah. But now see how we can pull, we can push pull. Remember on our trim, we pulled out 0.4 millimeters. So let's pull out, type in 0.4. I see how easy that was. We have a window. I mean, boom, there it is. Now, you can experiment with your printer depending on how uh, fine you want to print or, or can print. You may make your trim a little bit less or a little bit more, but this shows you the general principle of how to extrude all this. Let me get off that push-pull because if I hit my button, we'll be pushing and pulling. Let's get rid of these uh, guidelines so we can admire our work. This is what we've done in just, what is this, the second lesson, really? Third? But look, look where we are. I mean... You see, though, how you can incorporate these elements into any floor plan. All you got to do is draw your floor plan, pull up your block, put your roof on it, and then start putting in your decorations. And you're still one extrusion. All of this thinks it's one piece. You know. Now, there's some advantages to working with layers, and that we'll get onto that whenever I, I'm going to do a series where we create a kit, and we can print and dip print the parts of the kit in different colors this will have to print out in one color but it'll be very simple to print out and you can paint it you know but anyway we'll, we'll do a quick skip around just i always like to admire the work after we get through with it gives you a sense of accomplishment All right. Like I said, this is a bit like flying a plane with this mouth. <laughs> sort of have to develop a touch for doing it. All right. So. Chimney. All right. So that's where we are with our windows. When we come back, I'll go ahead and put the rest of the windows in. But when we come back, then we'll put in on some siding and some trim. And then... We'll have only one video left to do, and that will be the roof. The roof will be a special case condition because it will not be extruded. We will do it in a layer, and there's a reason for that, but I'll explain all that then. Okay, I decided before I leave you, I went ahead and put the other windows in, and we'd do one last fly around and show you how easy it is just to put in the windows. So we've got windows, doors, and a chimney so far. Look how neat that looks. Hasn't taken that long to get to this point either. If I wasn't explaining all of this, I could have done this rather quickly. I think I put those other windows in in about 10 or 15 minutes. Fly around underneath. See how you can see through the windows? So if you take a piece of cellophane and glue it to the inside here, it'll look like windows from the outside. Now those, those grills don't look real delicate, but I've learned that in the end scale, I actually did another video showing how to put facets on this part of the window right here on the grill. And it took a long time to do that, which would have bored everybody to death. And then when I printed it out, 
you, know, you really couldn't even tell I had done anything too much to it. So I had a second thought, and I came back and I redid this in a much simpler way. It is neat putting those facets on there. If you were if you were modeling in H O or particularly O or G scale, you probably it would it would be worth the time to do it because they, it would show at that scale. But in scale, this is going to look a little bit bigger than a hair <laughs> when we print this out. And uh, but anyway, so in the next video, we'll put some siding and some trim on. Getting close, y'all. Thanks for watching.